Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, uh, Coach Fox, John Elway, Joe Ellis for the, the kind remarks. I'm telling you that that means a lot hearing it come from you guys. Uh, thanks to all my teammates, former teammates that, that are in the front row, a couple guys in the back back there. I mean, I really do appreciate you guys showing up here today. This really means a lot. And and also like to, you know, thank my wife for coming with me, my youngest son, Braden, my agent, Jack, he's here. I mean, this is special for me because when I look back, <clears throat> all, I did, all I wanted to do when I started playing this game was be the best on the field. And, you know, my parents never asked me to do that. They never asked me to be the best, just be the best you could be. So, you know, to me, I felt like if I wanted to be where I am right now, I got to be the best on the field. And that's the way I approached everything. To my last snap, I tried to be the best on the field. And we all get old in this game. I don't have any regrets about what's happened, what's transpired throughout my career, what any shortcomings. You know, I've overcome a lot of injuries, you know, bad plays, you know, bad examples, <laughs> you know, bad coaching. Not, 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 not this staff, <laughs> not this staff. Trust me, there are some bad ones out there, but uh, we have a great staff here. <laughs> but, you know, I think what means the most to me, not only my coaches, front office people have done a lot for me throughout my career, the leaders in front of me, the Dow Greens, the Bruce Smith, uh, John Lynch, Brian Dawkins, Marco Coleman, uh, Nick Ferguson. I mean, these are guys I looked up to because they showed me how to get it done. Even though I thought I was doing it right, I never shot away from new information. And these guys definitely gave it to me. And, uh, man. You know, it's real tough walking away because I've been doing this thing for the last 28 years. And I never thought this day would come. Just like all NFL athletes don't think it's going to end. I'm one of those guys. But, you know, the reality hits. It's here. I look forward to my new challenge. You know, whatever that may be. Spend a lot of time with my family, my friends, you know, and just take it easy for a little while until I figure out what I want to do. But, you know, right now I'm enjoying the moment. I appreciate all you guys, this whole organization, what you've done for me. And I really, I mean, I hope to be doing something like this again in the future. I mean, <laughs> whatever it may be, standing up here talking to people about how much they meant to me. And so I don't want to forget anybody, but if I do, as far as thanking people, just forgive me. I'll make it up next time. You know, I, I, I first want to thank uh, the Redskins for drafting me. I can't forget about them. Because, you know, they took a shot on me. And, you know, it meant a lot. You know, gave me my first shot, seventh pick, 1999 NFL draft. Charlie Castle, had the guts to draft me. I told him he wouldn't, he wouldn't be uh, regretting this down the road because I will make it a great pick. And I hope I didn't disappoint. I only lasted five years in Washington, but here I go, coming to the greatest place on earth, the Broncos organization. And I just want to thank Mike Shanahan for taking a chance, giving me the opportunity to play a lot of defense, a little bit of special teams, and a lot of offense. You know, caught a few passes from Jake. You know, that's probably the last pass I caught, I think, Jake. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it was special. When I got here, we had high hopes. And I felt like coming here was a great thing because the Broncos were always in contention to win the title, even to this day. And every, every year I've been here, we've always had a chance to win. And it's been special to me, and I'm glad to say I was a part of it. I just hope, you know, the Broncos got as much from me as I got from this organization. Because looking back, there's a lot of things I wouldn't have been able to do, like flying with the Thunderbirds. If I didn't play here, I wouldn't have done that. You know, just little things like that that mean a lot to me. Memories that I could show, you know, my kids, you know, how much this place meant to me. And, you know, that, that means a lot. It's special. And I also want to thank, uh, go back to Elway, giving me a shot. I mean, I was in my 30s. You could have easily turned your back on me. Corners usually don't last or play well in their 30s. And you took a shot and gave you all I had. 
three years or whatever I had left. And you know, it's unfortunate that we're here now, but again, I'm smiling because I love it. I don't have to grind every day with you guys. I miss you guys, but hell, I don't miss practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> I don't. And I do miss you guys, though, a lot. And that's what I miss the most. You know, it was, <clears throat> it was easy to sit at home and be content. But, you know, just being here, seeing you guys' faces, you know, that's, that's why I play. That's why I play. That's all I got right now, but like I said, I'll be back. Something else, hopefully. All right, guys. I'll open it up to questions right now. Sorry. Yeah, champ. Um, in one sense... Tell uh, me where you at. Where are you? Right here, champ. Oh. How you doing? Should have known you go first. <laughs> the, uh, in one sense, it seemed like you played forever. You got to where, I think the last year or two, you were the oldest DB in the game. Mm -hmm. But in the other sense, you were just a pro bowler, locked down corner, 2012, and the end mm -hmm. seems rather abrupt. How, how did it seem to go to you as you stand there today, looking back on, on time? Did it go by fast? Did it, have you had enough? Oh, well, y you know, I it's unfortunate the way it ended, you know, being hurt and, you know, trying to battle through things. But I've seen worse. I've seen people go through worse things. I'm, I'm, I'm still standing. I feel good. I don't have any regrets about anything that's happened. Uh, I'm not – there's no part of my career that, you know, I look back and like, dang, I wish that it wouldn't happen. I mean, everything happens for a reason. So just take it as it comes. You know, I wasn't the oldest DB, maybe the oldest corner. Charles Wilson, Charles Wilson still got me, so. Uh, <laughs> but, it, you know, just looking back, there's no regrets, man. I, I feel good about everything, everything the way it's went along and the way it's ended. Congratulations, champ. Thank you. When you look over at your son, Braden, and when he's older and maybe he's talking to some of your former teammates or fans who saw you play, how do you want him to hear how you play? What, is, what would be rewarding for you to hear for your son? Someone says, your dad was this kind of player. How do you want to be remembered? Well, it, it's really up to these guys to really tell them how I am. I, I mean, I, I tell them every day how great I was. But, <laughs> you know, it, he's finally starting to pay attention to football, you know. So now it's up to these guys to tell him, tell him how I was, you know, put on some old tapes or something. But... You know, it's, I just hope they say I played with everything I had, you know. I, I played hard, I played smart, tough, and I was a great teammate. And that's, that's all that matters. Hey, Jim, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Um, speaking of Darren Woods, um, Charles Woodson, he said the other day that he, he thought um, that you could have made that same transition to safety like he did. Um, <laughs> do, do you wish you would have gotten that chance? Do, do you uh, think you could have done that? You know, I'm not, I, I, maybe, I, I know I could have. I'm not even going to say maybe, I know I could have. But, you know, it, I really didn't know how to go about the transition, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was a corner, and everybody looked at me as a corner. At some point in the last couple of months, I did say that I was open to it, but everybody still saw me as a corner, and so did I. So I wasn't going to fight the issue. You know, I'm, I'm – I'm content with what, what happened and how everything went down, but you know I, I'm not worried about playing safety. It's more punishment back there anyway, so I'm, I'm good. I feel good. <laughs> Champ, congrats. Thanks, Do you baby. think if you did not injure your foot in that preseason game last year, do you think you'd still be playing football right now? Who knows? You know, I, I, don't, I, I'm, I don't waste any time worrying about that. You know, it happened, I dealt with it, and I'm dealing with it now. It's no big deal, you know. Football's done too much good for me to worry about the bad, so I'm not worried about it. Um, I just would like to know, you know, what's your favorite memory as a pro? And it, does it stand out that much in all the years? And could you walk us through that moment? Moments? Uh, honestly, the best moments I had weren't, weren't on the field, you know. It was, 
you know, I love football, but it's, like I said, it's really about these guys, you know. I mean, there's a lot of stories I could tell, but, you know, I don't really want to incriminate myself or them. <laughs> but we, we, we had a lot of fun. That's really what I miss the most, just the camaraderie, being around the guys, building relationships. I made a lot of friends. I mean, everybody I talk to, they either my family or I play ball with them. So that's, that's really how it goes. Champ, I always thought John Elway was um, Pat Boland's favorite player. But every time I would talk to Pat, he would drop your name. I, I think you might have been his favorite player in a long line of great players in this organization's history. How does that feel? Well, I always knew I was better than Elway. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> no, it's, it's great. You know, Pat Boland, when I got here, Pat Boland was, he, he would talk, talk a lot of smack. He loved to win. He'd always ask me, what you think about this week? I mean, even up until early last year, he was asking me, what you think? You know, and I, I miss that, you know. To, I mean, the Bowling family has been great to me. I mean, his kids have been great to me and his whole family, man. It's, I, miss, I miss Pat Bowling a lot. Champ, uh, what does it mean to you that there are so many guys that – are still in the league that are here today and that learn from you and that they're going to carry on your legacy and all the things that you taught to them for the coming years? You know, uh, that, that's, that's really how I see the NFL and how players should be. You should be able to pass something along and, you know, teach guys how to be a pro and how to practice and little things like that. I mean, that's what I learned from Rod Smith, John Lynch, and, you know, uh, Dale Green early in my career. Those guys taught me what it was to be a pro, and that's all I hope guys say about me. Did I teach them something, how to be a pro, how to practice, whatever it may be? I just hope I rubbed off in a good way on a lot of guys, and you know, only they could tell you that. Champ, watching the video just now, they showed that interception against the Patriots. That one, I think, to a lot of people in this room, stands out. Yeah. Where does that one stack up? What do you remember about that one? Well, that's one of the, definitely one of the greatest moments in my career because of when it happened at home in the playoffs. You know, uh, it changed the game at that moment. I mean, I would never say that back when I was playing, but at that moment, that, that flipped that game. You know, it was a big point swing at that, at that time. We got to the championship game after that, gave us a shot at the Super Bowl or going to the Super Bowl. And, you know, it was definitely one of the best memories I had. A lot of guys that were on that team and sitting right up here. Champ Gearlip, uh, I'm just curious what, what happens now for you and will the football be a part of it in some way? More than likely football will be. You know, this game is, it, it gives a lot of people opportunities. And in, whether I'm playing or not, there's still opportunities within this game. So I'll, you know, explore the, the opportunities out there and see, see what I want to do, you know. but. Right now, I'm taking it easy, enjoying some time off, and and not having to wake up every morning being sore. So that feels great right now. Champ, uh, you and uh, Peyton are both SEC bred. Yeah. What do you remember about him as a kid player, and what does longevity mean to you in terms of greatness in yourself or in any other player? Well, not a lot of people could say they got one up on Peyton, but uh, he, he kicked our butt in college uh, three years straight that I was there. So not great memories. But one thing I do have is one interception, no touchdowns ever. Right, Peyton? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> so I got one on him, and I don't think there's a way he can get me back, right? <laughs> But he was definitely one of the great ones. Always knew he'd be playing for as long as he wanted to. So I, I just glad I had the privilege of being one of his teammates. Yeah, Jim, just go back to the trade, which is probably why you're here today. Mm -hmm. You know, how big was that moment for you? <clears throat> and what do you remember about it? Your, some of your memories about how it all went down? You know, it was, I was baffled, to be honest with you. It was, it was one of those times that, I was at the in, really entering the prime of my career. 
I went to four Pro Bowls as a risk in my last four years there, and I never imagined that I would leave that place. But it, it was just never in their plans to keep me around. But, I mean, they, they pretty much laughed in my face. <laughs> but I don't blame that on the organization whatsoever. You know, they, they were great to me while I was there. People were great. I mean, there were times I missed it when I first got here, but, you know, this place makes you forget about all the bad stuff real quick. So I'm glad it happened. You know, it was surprising, but I'm definitely glad it happened. Champ, all your time here, but how special is it that the last game you played here was winning the AFC championship and you were on the field? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was special. You know, I enjoy every moment for that moment. And regardless of what happened after that, that moment was special to me. And I'll never forget it. I mean, I, I won the biggest game you can win on your home field. So it definitely felt good. I def I never forget it. And, you know, it'll be something I'll talk to these guys about in the future, you know, those great memories. But, you know, hopefully this year we, they don't come up short. Well, I'm, I'm going to say we because I feel like I'm still part of this. So I hope we don't come up this short this year. Champ, what did it feel like to walk out on that field and have all these wonderful Bronco fans cheer for you? What was that like? It felt great, man. It, it, there were people on that field. I, I, are you talking about the AFC Championship game or just on the field in general? Okay. I'm still stuck on that. Um, it felt good because one thing I knew was every game was going to be sold out. I mean, they, they've been selling out games here since I got here, I know. So even longer than that. So it, it was great because the atmosphere is good. People hate playing here, the altitude. The environment is perfect for the NFL. And definitely, if you want to be a Bronco, it's definitely the best place to play because of the home field advantage. And our fans are barring on the best in the game. Champ, congratulations. What's up, G-Man? How you doing? Was there, always, was there ever one guy that you look forward to going against as far as like a wide receiver or quarterback? And was there one guy that you went, oh, man, I'm in for a long day? Well, <laughs> early in my career, it was uh, – it was probably the Giants because they were big rivals of the Redskins, Giants, Cowboys. I hated dealing with them. First game of my career, I played Michael Irvin one on one. I mean, first game, uh, you know, it was just thinking back, I'm, I still have nightmares about that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when I was here, you know, I hated the Raiders. I mean, I grew to hate them. It really wasn't that I came here hating them, just when the fans that week, they always talked about it. And I'm like, damn, why, why, why do they hate the Raiders so bad? You know, I never understood until you lived it. And I'm sure guys that are just getting here understand, you know, they're starting to get a feel for that. But that's one team I always hated to play. And it wasn't any particular players, really. There's a lot of guys I hated playing because they were so good. But Peyton being one of them, had some of the best receivers I ever play. They were tough. A lot of tough opponents. Champa. These guys have already mentioned it, you've alluded to it, but what's it going to mean to you to be inducting the Hall of Fame someday? And now that countdown is on, so what makes you kind of a Hall of Fame player, you think, when you look at all the other corners that are in there? Well, I'm not going to sit here and plead my case. I mean, the work is done. I mean, it's not in my hands. But, you know, just looking at it ob objectively, I, had, I mean, I would vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> Champ, kind of to piggyback off that, and congrats, but at what point in your career did you go from wanting to be the best to realizing you were, if not the best corner in the game, one of the best? And then, look, you played with Daryl Green and Deion Sanders. Where would you rank yourself all time? I mean, if someone's telling you, hey, where are you going to list yourself? You told us you're better in Elway. Where are you all time on the corners <laughs> list? Uh, I don't know, man. You know, I just if I'm mentioned in the top ten, that's great because – Every time I look at a list like that, there's about seven or eight guys that I would say could be number one. And then, I mean, I have my favorites, but then the next guy's going to have his favorites. So, I mean, it's just great to be in the discussion. You know, I don't know where I rank or where anybody would rank me, but, you know, I have my favorites. I mean, I have Rob Wilson, Deion Sanders. You know, those are two of my favorites. So, I mean, everybody's going to have their favorites. 
Champ, you uh, were a leader since you arrived here. You used the, the word we, and I'm assuming you've been watching this football team. <laughs> what sage advice, if you were given a forum and here we are, would you have for these players, these former teammates, as they move forward this season? Well, week to week, you know, you don't want to get too high, too low. I mean, it's, it's all cliche. They know. They know. I, I really don't have to say a whole lot. I mean, we got a great coaching staff. Our front office is great. So they're going to make sure they do what it takes to get it done on Sunday. So there's really not much I could say. I mean, it's a week to week season. Anything can happen. You just got to bring your A game every, every week. That's it.